Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. What a weekend ahead of us. Welcome along to the weekend racing postcast. It's Bruce Millington, David Jennings, and Paddy Powers. Frank Hickey looking ahead to the Dublin Racing Festival and a great card at Sandown, which fingers crossed will survive the weather. The snow looked like it was going to wipe everything out, and apart from the uh, all weather stuff, but it looks like we might be okay. I'm told there's no problems in Ireland, where Leopardstown stages two days of superb action, and the excellent clerk of the course. Down at Sandown, Andrew Cooper is full of hope that everything will be fine for the ITV races on Saturday, which is where we will start. And the 150 features the champion hurdler Bouvardere, going for a hat-trick in the 888 Sport Contenders Hurdle. Frank, how short is he? He's 1 to 8, Vision to Flow is 9 to 1, Roxana 16 to 1, Raven Black 20 to 1, and the Dollar Man's 40 to 1. Now, DJ, just because there's only two experts this week, doesn't mean you can talk for even longer, but we will get your views on what will happen here. Bouvardere obviously suffered a shock defeat last time. Do you think he'll get chinned again, or will this be back to his regal self? Yeah, I'm going to try and save my words for later uh, in the postcast because there's plenty of good race to talk about. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet, which is unlike me. Uh, I just think it's fairly simple. I think Bouverdale will travel all over these. I don't think Barry will have to get too serious. And I think he'll win by a similar margin as he's done for the last two years. OK, Frank, remind us what those margins were and whether you think that will be repeated or extended. Yeah, uh, I think it was one and a half lengths and one and three quarter lengths in the last two years. So I imagine it'll be something similar where he'll just be on the bridle and cruise past and won't win by too far. I just have a um, a little theory on why he might have been beaten at Christmas. Just uh, He ran a, a career-high RPR uh, in the Fighting Fifth when he beat Sam Crow. He ran um, an RPR of 173. To put it in context, his two champion hurdle wins generated RPRs of 167 and 170. And I generally find when a horse coming back after a little bit of an absence, I know it was only whatever seven or eight months maybe eight months runs at a career high mark like that they need a little bit longer than just 25 days is what he had off they need generally i think around six weeks so that might have been the reason why he got turned over at kempton but um i expect him to get back on track tomorrow do you see him winning the champion early easily enough frank uh not easily enough um he's definitely the one to beat but i wouldn't be shocked to see him turned over this year i'm still not sure who, who by but um, I wouldn't be steaming into him at whatever he is, 13 to 8 or I'm something. sorry, I'm going to have to press you for one. Who can beat him? Um, the one I think is interesting, and I, I could be way off here, if the, gro- if the ground is just the normal good to soft, would be Sharjah. Although he disappointed the Cheltenham last year, his be- beating of Faheen... And then his win at Leopardstown suggests he may have just uh, turned a corner and really be improving. And I'd be willing to give him a chance, you know. He's about 9 or 10 to 1. Would you be taking the favourite on in the champion hurdle, DJ? Um, it goes against all kind of tipsters, like all, all um, recognisable tipsters with a good reputation. Everybody seems to be taken on Lorena. But... I just think sometimes, as I've said on this show before, I think you have to try and believe your eyes rather than the form. And I just think we could be witnessing something really, really special with Lorena. It it goes against everything. She's beaten nothing. She's only beaten mares. She's only beaten novice mares. But for pure excitement and potential and promise, I think she could be really, really special. So that would be the reason I would think that Lorena is the most likely winner at this stage. OK, back to the matters in hand on Saturday. The 2.25 at Sandown is the 8.88 Sport. Silly Isles, Novices Chase, and this is a much, much more competitive heat, Frank. Yeah, Vindication 7 to 4. Def Desai and Lost in Translation are both 9 to 4. Delora is 14 to 1, and Mulcahy's Hill is 16 to 1. And Frank, who wins? Yeah, I think Vindication is the one to beat. Um, He's not the most, uh, he doesn't blow you away with the way he wins, but he always seems to just find and, and just do enough to win. And um, there's one bit of form that does make him stand out as potentially top class, and that was his novice or hurdle win at Ascot last season when he gave Champ six pounds and beat him a neck. The third Justice Sting was 13 lengths back, is rated 137 over fences now. So that was a decent enough race. Um, I, th- I really liked the way he won at Carlisle when he kept finding, and even when he beat Jerry's back at Ascot, he, he was never in doubt. I think the danger to him is Defy Desai, who I think Barry will probably hang on to him a bit longer than he did at Cheltenham, but I think Vindication is a horse going places. He's six from six, and I 
expect him to be seven from seven. David That's Jennings, what do you think? Yeah, it's funny, I obviously got married on New Year's Day and I'm in a, a, a kind of a, a group of Liverpool fans that there's 12 of us in a group and we put a tenner in, in a, every week and then for 12 weeks each person gets to pick a bet and bet with 60 euro and we bank the other 60 euro. So it was my week, the, the, the week of the wedding and uh, I was absolutely mad and lost on translation in the dipper. So during the ceremony, there was a big cheer down the back of the church. Mark Brennan and a few other lads down the back that were in the group cheering. So I actually knew he had won before I came out of the church. But when I watched the race again, I was, I have to say, I watched the race and immediately after the race, I said to myself, do you know what? Lost in translation might never beat Defi Desai again. Because Defi Desai, like he travelled all over him. I thought he jumped particularly well. And it was just a long run in up the hill allowed loss in translation to get back. I thought Effie Desal was dossing a bit in front. It's you know, he was properly asked to race, unlike at Exeter when he beat top of the game. I think Barry will hold on to him for longer and I think Vindication and loss in translation might just set it up for him. So um I'd be in the Defi Desai camp. I actually think he probably should be favoured. So the 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 priest is saying, giving you words of advice on how to stay together for eternity and, and love each other and look after each other. And all of a sudden, a dozen people down the back start cheering. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's a, there was about three or four lads down the back of the church. And um, I actually knew that the, the race, I think, at, was at maybe 145 or 135. I can't remember exactly the dipper. But there was this kind of cheer down the back of the church and nothing exciting was happening in the mass. Like we were lighting candles or something. I was like, they're obviously not cheering for us. So obviously lost in translation one. And um, as it transpired, he did. Must have been some rowdy wedding if they're cheering during the service. At three o'clock at Sandown is the 888 Sport Heroes Handicap Hurdle. Over three miles and now it gets really competitive, Frank. Yeah, Casco Dairy is now our favourite. Six to one, Ballymoy, seven to one, Keeper Hill and Lord, Lord Napier are eight to one. Miss Drantolini, Virginia Cheek are ten to one and we're twelves bar. And before Frank tells us why he's giving Miss Drantonini one more chance, DJ, who have you got? Oh, this is really tricky. Uh, Casco Dairy uh, is obviously very interesting, but he's up fourteen pounds and it's a better race. But you kind of look at him and you say to yourself, he's a seven-year-old going places. He probably has more to offer. Um, one that I think at a big price could go well, and he would actually, at the prices, would be my selection each way, is Flem Cara. Emma Lavelle's team are much better form now. Aidan Coleman takes the ride. Um, he, he, like the ground should be fine. I think he'll cope fine with the ground and uh, certainly stays as well. So at the prices, just because I think could have a little bit more to offer. It's carrying 10-6, rated 132. I think it could get to 140 maybe over hurdle. So I'm going to go for Flem Cara. And just very quickly, what did your wedding speech make up minutes? Um, I can't remember exactly. I remember roughly. I wrote down, roughly, I'd say mine was about <laughs> probably 20 minutes. Maybe. 20 minutes? You're joking. <laughs> Is that like too That's long or too way, short? way too long. I mean, obviously long. yours was going to be a long speech, but did you get them... Was there not a dry eye in the house by the time you finished? See, I, I kind of... Probably wasn't I, an open eye in the house after <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> I actually... It was funny because I said to myself beforehand, right, this is my wedding day, so I don't want to be try to crack jokes and try and be funny because I'm obviously not naturally funny. So I didn't want to try and be too funny. So I tried to be sentimental and tried to be sincere. So that's why it was a little bit shorter than planned. Oh, lovely. Frank, who wins at three o'clock at Sandown? Yeah, funnily enough, I've uh, landed on the same horse as DJ, Flem Cara. Um, wow. quite, uh, quite progressive last year. Um, won three on the bounce before running this race last year, disappointed. But Emma Lavelle's were never really firing last season and are much better this year. Um, now, this hasn't really taken to chasing. It was uh, tailed off at Foss last, but it was running much better at Chepstow behind Steely Edition and Yal Tower when um, unseating four out at Chepstow at the start of December. Um, those two horses are gone up. Uh, I tell you now, Steve Edition went up £13 for that. Yeltari has now gone up £17. So he probably had an impossible task even to latch on to them. I think he would have been third that day. He's running off a mark of 132 here. He won nearly on the bridle at Chepstow last January off a mark of 130. Um, he idled in front, he didn't do a tap. I think he should travel well into this. And I can see him going well. And one, I, I don't think he'll win tomorrow, but one definitely to keep an eye on for the rest of the season is Brio Conti for Paul Nichols. Um, he hasn't been seen since November 2017 when he won a novice chase up in Carlisle. Um, Nichols has won this twice in the past 10 years. Both horses had been chasing and returned to hurdles. Top of the game, of course, last year. And Beshebar going back about 10 years. Um, 
this horse was it won a really competitive handicap at Kempton over 2-5 in March 2017 went to the grey one at Aintree was only 5-1 to one, um, to win a race that Finian's Oscar ended up winning but the likes of Captain Farre Mazir de Zabot and Benatar were just ahead Le Bagarwa uh, Bellamy de Sivla, Le Broy, Lachter Spirit were behind. So he's on a mark of 143. Uh, be interesting to see what Paul Nichols' comments are later about this, but I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being targeted at something like the Carl Cup. Um, so he's definitely one to keep an eye on how he goes tomorrow. Okay, Carl, and you've, tomorrow. Give, you've given up on Mr Antolini now, have you? Just the three miles would be a concern for me. Um, okay. If it was 2-4, two, 2-5, two, um, I'd probably think he'd be solid enough each way, but Righty just like three miles wouldn't do it for me. No. Let's concern ourselves with another difficult head scratcher, the 3.35 at Sandown. It's the 8.88 Sport Masters handicap chase. Over three miles, Frank, a show of betting and then your selection. Yeah, we're five places here as well. Uh, Bellamy de Pictons, four to one. Give me a copper, five to one. Ami de Bois, eight to one. Ublon de Zabo, ten to one, along with Divine Spear, Shanro Santos. Kimberly Candy's twelve to one, along with Le Rev, and we're fourteens bar. Um, Go on, the one I like is Ami de Bois. Um, he's probably a little bit underrated. He was fifth in uh, Albert Bartlett behind Penn Hill, um, whatever, 18, nearly two years ago. But. Um, he really started to come into form there recently. He was third in the Welsh National Trial at Chepstow, um, beaten five lengths by Ramses Tatoye. Now, that horse was second in the Welsh National itself under a four-pound penalty. and has now gone up another, I think, four or five. Um, the likes of Back to the Hatch was fourth that day. He was second at Haylock. It, it showed up really well at Haylock last time um, over just short of three and a half miles. It didn't stay that day, but it was a... Out in front to about the third last, and then weaken from there. Now there's a little bit of pace on here with loose chips, but if they don't go mental up up front, I think this horse is well handicapped. Um, he was a handicap hurdle winner uh, a couple of years ago off a mark of um, I think it was 137. So he's running here off 132. I think the the interesting thing, thing too is Graham McPherson has had three winners from eight runners in the last two weeks. So with a small yards and form like that, I think they're worth following. And this horse is definitely capable of making a mark. Um, Thank you, Frank. Off that uh, 132. Frank likes Amy Desbois. Who does David Jennings like? This is really, really good for me and really, really bad for Frank. When I before I come on here. I was looking through these two handicaps and I said to myself, I'm going to pick two completely from left field that nobody else will fancy, Flem Cara and Ami Dubois. And uh, for all the points Frank made, I, I wasn't expecting this at all, for all the points Frank made, Ami Dubois, I even went through Graham McPherson's form as well and saw that he had three winners, which was the last thing I checked. Just think the trip and the ground are perfect. Like this time last year, Ami Dubois was rated 141, down to 132 now. And he's a little bit of a forgotten horse. You kind of forget back to his novice days as a hurdler at Cheltenham and, and how well he ran in, in that race. And... Uh, like he, he should have so much more to offer off, off 132. I think he's the best handicapped horse in the race. The one horse who could be a class above them is giving me a copper who hasn't run since 2017. Like a bit like um, the horse Frank was talking about, trained by Paul Nichols in the last. But when he won his two horse race at Kempton when he was last seen in November 2017, he absolutely annihilated three ways who went on to be rated 133. So that suggests that he could be well handicapped off 145. Give me a copper. But uh, Ami Debat was the one I came down on. Right then, we will move on to Ireland next. And talking of Ireland, Racing Post is delighted to offer you the chance to win an incredible trip to visit Ireland's top two jumps trainers. Two lucky, get, two lucky winners and a guest each will be treated to an exclusive visit to the Gordon Elliott Yard on Thursday, February the 21st and the Willie Mullins Yard on Friday, February the 22nd. It really is a money can't buy trip. I've never been to Gordon's. I'm sure DJ has loads of times. I've certainly been to Willie's and that is absolutely superb. You really will love it. If you love your racing, you love your jumps racing, you must give this a go. For more details on how to enter, just visit racingpost.com slash competition. Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18plusbegambleaware.org Welcome back. Let's get stuck into the Dublin Racing Festival. It's the, is it the second year of it, DJ? Yes, it is. It, last it's year, so it's yeah, yeah. I, it, it made an instant impression last year. This year it's going to be equally good. And like I say, the weather's been kind. Despite all the snow and ice, it looks like they're going to race both days at Leopardstown. Cannot wait for this. It's going to be superb. 
Really great race, and they've rejigged the program so the chases are on at the end, so that if there's a little bit of uh, ice in the ground, it will have thawed by then. Uh, we'll look at the 12.50. Before I get the lads' thoughts, there's a great exclusive free bet offer uh, from our sponsors, Paddy Power, on this race. If you bet £20 or £10 each way on the first race at Leopardstown on Saturday, the 12.50, you get a £10 free bet on any other race on the card. This is for new Paddy Power customers, and you can find details at racingpost.com slash free bet. So if you haven't got a Paddy, a Paddy Power account, this is a great chance to get started. Okay then, let's look at the 12.50. It's the Nathaniel Lacey and Partners Solicitors 50,000 Cheltenham bonus for stable staff. Novices hurdle, it's a grade one, over two miles and six furlongs. And Frank, how do Paddy Power bet? Yeah, this uh, mark is subject to change, I think, considering Battle Over Dying has come out this morning. But at the moment, Dunvegan is 4-1 to favourite. Commander of Fleet and Sal Soretta are both 9-2. to two. Relegate is 5-1. to one. Come to me and get a reason. And Rhinestone are all 10-1 to one and we're 14-1 to one bar. DJ, start us off. Yeah. Obviously no battle over Diane, so you're probably just lacking a, a, a potential superstar. He was the grade one winner in the field that you thought could be something really special. The Willie Mullins jockey bookings here are, are fascinating as much as they are head-scratching because the shortest price Willie Mullins run in the Paddy Power market at the moment is Sal Soretta, who's ridden by Patrick Mullins, who has to get down to 11 stone three, which suggests to me that this horse is third choice because Ruby's on relegate and Come To Me is ridden by Paul Townend. So both of those are bigger prices than Salsaretta, which is obviously interesting. Dunvegan is a horse that I actually put up for the Albert Bartlett at 40 to 1 earlier this week on another show we do up in the ante. Because I think the form of his fairy race has worked out spectacularly well with Swordsman winning next time. And a good few in behind also winning. Pafahi thinks the world of him. Now whether he deserves to be favoured for a grade 1 on the back of that is, is certainly debatable. And at the moment he's no value at four to one the horse i think is value because i think he is a potential grade one winner is rhinestone now he was he was a little bit disappointing at navin last time he made a, mis a couple of mistakes especially the second last and he got no space and and room to maneuver up the home straight i think he's better than the bare form of that i think they had a few kind of minor hiccups with him after the race but i just hope that martin pipe at chatlam isn't the plan for him because if it is you know, I could see him finishing the first six here and getting a nice mark for, for Cheltenham. But if they think he can win a grade one at Cheltenham, if they think he can win the Ballymore, I think he's a real life player here. I think he's a really, really potentially classy horse. So I'm going to go with Rhinestone. OK, is that one of those ones, DJ, where you watch the market or do you just lump on and hope that he shortens? Yeah, like, I don't know. With these JP horses, like, there was one that won um, earlier on in the week at Down Royal, trained by Robert Tyner, that there was no real money for. Eights into sevens, and, and it absolutely bolted up on, under Philip Enright. So, I don't know. At the moment, I'm finding it very hard to judge the JP horses. Um, I just think, at the moment, he looks an ideal type for the Martin Pipe. He could be in a different league to the horse he's running against in that. So, it's just a case of whether they think... You know, he's really, really top class and he might win a Ballymore or whether they think he's going to be a, one of their live players and one of the handicaps. OK, Frank, it's a, t a difficult old start to the weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tough race. Um, the one, yeah, it would have been a lot easier if they just left Battler over dying in. We could have just tipped him up. But the one I'm kind of warming to a little bit is... Um, Relegate for Willie Mullins. Now, Tower Bridge broke uh, Willie's monopoly in this race last year when getting up to win. But Relegate obviously won the champion bumper last year uh, at Chetland. She won the mayor's bumper here at this meeting last year too. Disappointed a punch of sound in the bumper there. But um, initially, when she was beaten over hurdles at Punchestown on her, on her reappearance, yeah, we were very disappointed with that. But in hindsight, Cunio absolutely mulled her at the last hurdle. She may have won only for that. Cunio went away in one of her attempts qualifier Leopardstown at Christmas off a of mark of 126 has gone up to 133 uh, relegate dropped to two miles at Nays last time beating Caravation and um, Barrington Court of Jesse Harrington they're two decent enough mares the two miles would have been short enough for her. I think the step up and trip is a massive plus and I think it's um, I think it's no worry that Ruby's picked her I think she's got a solid enough chance and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, she shortened up another, another little bit before the evening's out. Thank you, Frank. OK, the next race is a real class E affair. It's the 125, the BHP Insurance Irish Champion Hurdle uh, and a very fruity affair at the top of the market, Frank. Yeah, Apples Jade is even money. Melon 5-2, to two, Super Sunday 11-4, to four, Petit Mouchoir 16-1 to one, and with 33 is bare. What do you like, Frank? Just, I mean, 
it's the race I kind of struggle with. I know Apple's Jade is a superstar and like she like when she's good she's brilliant, but I just have a small question mark about the trip two miles. She hasn't run um over the trip since I think down Royal in November two thousand sixteen, as far as I know, when she was second to Rashan. Um it's not going to be easy for her. And then Mellon, he won a maiden hurl at Leperstown, but he's been disappointing in his two runs here. Last year in this race, when well beaten, when he went very weak on the show and when on his reappearance behind Sharjah as well. So the one I kind of came down on was Super Sunday. Like, I think people underestimate him. He doesn't really stay three miles, in my opinion. And like, he won this race last year, beating Fahin easily enough. He ended up winning the uh, Punchtown champion hurdle as well, albeit when Mellon and Sam Crow both fell. But he won easily enough from Wicklow Brave. Um, he was second to Sharjah at Christmas. And I wouldn't be surprised if... I think Apple's Jade is going to have to go re- relatively hard from the front here over two miles for, because of the drop and trip. And they might just play the Super Sunday's hands. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if he turns her over. OK. Uh, David, what are your views? Yeah, I can see Frank's case there. Um... Actually, Frank said that she was beaten by Rashan on her last try at two miles. She's actually, her last two tries at two miles, most recently was in the fighting fifth when she was beaten a nose by Irving. Um, and the time before was against Rashan in that WKD hurdle at Down Royal. So twice, her last two tries at two miles in 2016, she was beaten. Um, that's obviously a little bit of a concern, but I, I, I think the, the 2019 um, Apple Shade is different to the 2016 one. They really just go out and let her do her own thing now. I spoke to Jack Kennedy earlier on this week and he said, like, she's literally the easiest horse in the world to ride because you can just completely let her roll. And the fact that Tombstone is in here as well will allow her to to have a little bit of company up front, I think, because probably her best ever performance was in the Hatton's Grace at Fairy House in uh, December when Wicklow Brave took her on up front. And she seemed to love that. And I think they're going to do something similar here, a little bit of company for her up front in in the shape of, of Tombstone. And, you know, I, I was like Frank, I was trying to take her on and I was kind of looking at Super Sunday. And then I was looking at um, Mellon, who should come on a lot for his return in the Ryanair hurdle. And after about like an hour, I said to myself, do you know what? I'm trying to find real chinks in her armour. And I think she's going to keep, I think she's going to cope with the drop to two miles because she's going to go so quick. And I just think she's better than them getting the seven pound. And uh, I think this is a good move by Gordon Elliott running her in this race. Would I back her at the price she is at the minute? Probably not. Do I think anything will beat her? Probably not. Poor old Frank made one little mistake and then DJ absolutely butchered him there, didn't he? Blimey, O'Reilly. That's, that's, that's what married Doesn't life does to you, Bruce. Right, then. the 310 is the Labrooks Dublin chase. <laughs> a grade one over two miles and one furlong. Another classy contest. Who is favourite, Frank? Yeah, Min is 8 to 13, St. Calvas 5 to 1, Simply Ned 11 to 2, Cass Grace Paddy 8 to 1, Special Tiara 16 to 1, and Ordinary World is 20 to 1. Uh, DJ, you're going first. Oh, Bruce, this is an absolute certainty. I think this is probably the, the banker, the favourite banker of, of the meeting. I, like, I respect Frank more than you'll ever know, but I will lose respect for him if he tips something up against Min because I think Min is rock solid. Won the race last year, easily beat Simply Ned. You could say turning around the form from their from their to their clash at Christmas that year, but Min did beat Simply Ned and it was overturned in the Stewart's room. Like you go through Min's form and you kind of forget how good he actually is. Like second to Altior in front of Bouvard Air and that Supreme. And every single strand of his form actually does stack up. So uh, yeah, I, I, I as I said, I lose respect for Frank if he tips something up to beat Min. Frank's desperately trying to find something else then. <laughs> Jeez, you make one you make one mistake and I he know. has you down as clueless like. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? What are you gonna go for, Frank? Ah uh, look, Min will win. Like as in the, the money at the start of the week was telling in that uh, I think Footpad was favourite at the beginning of the week and uh, Min was, I don't know, two to one or nine to four or something and um yeah. Probably should have guessed that something wasn't right with Footpad, but look, he'll win. He's 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 different level to these. Like you see there, he's second in a Supreme, second in championship chase, both Altier. And there's nothing in here that could um, live with Altair at all. Like I think St. Calvin's a nice horse, but he's not good enough. And um, Simply Ned likes Leopard's Town, but it'd be a shock if he could beat Min, considering Min's had the run. And uh, yeah, he'll just win. I think Frank, uh, DJ's absolutely right there. Well, you forget how good Min is. He's an underrated sort. The next race we're going to look at is the 345. It's another chase over two mile one. This time the novices. It's the Frank Ward Solicitors. Arkle Novices Chase. And Paddy Powerbet as follows. 
Larisberg 7 to 4, Knocknan News 130, mainly Can 7 to 1, Duke of the Thigh 8 to 1, along with Paloma Blue 10 to 1, Articulum and Void Rev, and us and them as the outsider at 16 to 1. Very much looking forward to this. Frank, who's your fancy? Yeah, this is a cracking renewal, I think. I think the way the race is potentially going to be run with Knocknanus, Articulum, um, Void Rev, all liking to get on with it. Paloma Blue should be close enough to the pace as well. This could be a right frenetic race. And I just think, although he's favoured, it's hard to get away from the Reesburg. He's done nothing but improve all season over fences. Like, even if you go by his RPRs, his four runs have been 135, 151, 154, 157. So he's been getting better with every run. Um, the only defeat he's met with was against Deltwork in the Drinmore. Deltwork, uh, to me, is should be fab for the RSA, but that's probably a little bit controversial. But like the Reesburg's done nothing wrong. He was very impressive at Leopardstown at Christmas, and I think the way the race will be run will suit him. He has the stamina to stay further if necessary, and I think this will be run really, really strongly and will suit him. DJ. I think at the prices you've got to chance Mengli Khan. Like Mengli Khan is seven to one. <laughs> Mengli Khan is seven to one now. Okay, seven to one. He was seven to four to beat Lurichberg. Lurichberg was three to one. So like, there's a serious turnaround in the prices here from the run at Christmas. The Mengli Khan was bitterly disappointed. Make no mistake about it. But his next flat horse to run the Racing Post Trophy and these chasers that come from the flat, they are in and out. Like Gordon will admit that they just sometimes they just sulk. And Mengli Khan sulked from the word go, never looked happy, never looked comfortable, um, and didn't travel. Like, the key thing with Mengli Khan should have been trying to get him to settle. Trying to get him to settle, trying to get him to move was the problem, I thought, at Leperstown. He never, never really looked like he was up for it. I think you'll see a different Mengli Khan this time. And if you go back to his chase debut at Punch, then he was breathtaking to me that day. Um, I thought he jumped brilliantly. I thought he looked like a potential Arkle winner and waiting there. He's obviously got more kinks than anybody. He's a, he's a, he's a bit of an enigma. But at 7-1, to one, you're getting a great price about him bouncing back. And at the prices, I think he's the one to be on. I'd also be interested in Paloma Blue, who jumped absolutely deplorably when winning at Leperstown over Christmas. But he won. He jumped badly and he won. So if his jumping does improve a little bit, he could sneak into the arc of reckoning. And you have to remember, Paloma Blue and uh, Paloma Blue and Mengli Khan were both rated 150 over hurdles. Larichberg was only 140. Now, I know he's a much better chaser, but you're getting 7-1 to one and 9-1, to one, about two horses who are £10 better over hurdles than Larichberg. Worst tip of the postcast all weekend, do you think, there, Frank? Uh, he's honestly one horse I... Despite, I really don't like Mengli Khan like as in I have a name for him but I can't say it over the air um, he's horrible he's horrible I hate if he wins good luck to you but he will never ever ever get a penny of my money righto lads very quickly anything else you like on the uh, Le Leopardstown card before we get the Saturday naps DJ um, yeah, I think Uradel has got a cracking chance in the Labrox hurdle, the 2 o'clock. Um, I just think he's rated 132 over hurdles. He's 102 in the flat, won a big handicap at um, won a big handicap at Galway on the flat during the summer. Um, I just think this race will be run to suit. He probably wants a little bit further, but um, I think he, he'd be able to creep into it under Ruby Walsh. Only got 10-8 to carry. And my nap is also at Leberstown, but I will leave that to the naps. OK, Frank, anything before we get the naps? Yeah, I'd agree Ured is one to keep an eye on. I'm not sure. Like, two miles might just be a little bit sharp for him, but again, he's one to be keeping an eye on, potentially with the um, Carl Cup in mind uh, at Cheltenham. Um, the one I thought was interesting in the 410, the two-mile handicap chase, Kildari for Ted Walsh, Ruby Walsh's riding. Um, he beat Duke of the Thai early in the season in beginner's chase. He was getting seven pounds that day, but Duke of the Thai is running in the, um, the Arkle trial at Leopardstown so uh, that'll tell you it was a fair effort and he was a massive eye catcher in the Dan Moore I thought Ruby settled him out the back he seemed to be trying to teach him to settle he was never put in the race and he ran on nicely to finish fourth beaten I think about eight or nine lengths um, I think there's definitely more in him he needs to get a win to get to kind of mark that would get him into the Close Brothers or the Grand Annual and I think he might be uh, well handicapped off a mark of 133 Lovely let's get the Saturday naps this will not be beaten. What do you have for us, David Jennings? Uh, moon over Germany in the 420 at Leopardstown. And Frank? Uh, Canton 745, probability Ooh. for Archie Watson. Um, the last day I was on, I think I put this up. It was a shocker for me all day. I think it was the only winner I put up. But uh, this is unlucky on its debut at Chelmsford behind Buckingham. We got Muller in the run, was really heavily punted that day as well, went off 3-1. to one. Um, 
that was back in May of last year. Wasn't seen again till December. Um, was second. Was very weak in the market. I think went from about nine two out to eleven or twelve to one. Finished second. Ran a really good race. Um, then ran a couple of weeks ago. Won very easy, beating a horse called Sea of Reality. Um, sea of Reality ran a couple of weeks later. Was only caught on the line by a really well backed newcomer for Hugo Palmer. She's making her handicap debut here off a market seventy three. I'd be shocked if she's not well handicapped off that. Archie Watson's a tremendous trainer. He's informed at the moment as well. Five winners from the last twenty three runners, twenty two percent strike rate, and I think she'll win her handicap debut. Okay, that's the five forty five at Kempton. Probability. Frank is so confident he forgot the time in the race, but probability at 5.45 at Kempton is Frank Snap. Let's look at Sunday next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Welcome back to the Racing Post weekend postcast. It's Bruce Millington, David Jennings and Frank Hickey from Paddy Power. And we are looking ahead to day two of the Dublin Racing Festival. Eight fantastic races at Leopardstown on Sunday. If you're going... You're in for a treat. If not, do try and catch the action on Racing TV. We'll start with the 115. It's the Tattersall's Island Spring Juvenile Hurdle. And Sir Eric, I believe, heads the market, Frank. Yeah, he's 7 to 4. Tiger Tap Taps, 9 to 4. Course of Blime, 11 to 2. Gardens of Babylon, 9 to 1. Soren, 10 to 1. And we're 12 to 1 bar. Frank, what do you fancy here? And could this lead to any Cheltenham punts, do you think, this race? Yeah, well, I think what we learned from last week is that the Irish juveniles are a fair bit ahead of the UK counterparts at the moment, the way that Facker Dudery won. What I've heard is that Facker Dudery mightn't even be the best in Joseph Stable. Um, apparently the Sir Eric is very good. Um, obviously his flat form when he was third behind Stradivarius in the long distance uh, cup at Ascot is tremendous form. He's rated 109 on the flat. He won in his debut over hurls at Leopardstown, albeit narrowly from Tiger Tap tap who reopposes um, but you feel he'll probably improve for that and I think he's the one for the triumph and I'm hoping he'll win on Sunday. Okay David, uh, Frank's going for the Fev, what are you going for? Yeah I just think the market has, has probably given that maiden herd that Leopard's Town too much respect almost, like Sir Eric and Tiger Tap Tap fought out to finish, there was a neck between them, yeah it was grand, it was good form and, and Sir Eric was a really highly rated flat horse rate, 109 but they're, they're like 7-4 and 9-4, and you're talking about Cur Sublime, who would have won a grade 2, and a quite competitive grade 2 at Leprosy on, on St. Stephen's Day, is 11-2. I think there's too much between them in the market. Um, if you remember a horse owned by Chris Jones and trained by Gordon Elliott a couple of years ago called Mega Fortune, they, they changed riding tactics on Mega Fortune after a couple of runs. He was being held up, and then they, they knew he obviously stayed further. And they, they rode him more prominently, which which reaped handsome dividends. And I think it's going to be the same with Curse Sublime here. Like, he fell, he took a horrible fall at Leprechaun. And you're obviously going to be a little bit concerned that, you know, coming into this race on the back of that horrible fall. But I do think more prominent tactics and using his stamina, like he's a thorough stayer. I think the, the, the triumph at Chatham is really going to play to his strengths. And at the prices... Would I rather back Sir Eric at 7-4, Cur Sublime at 11-2? It would be no contest for me, it would be Cur Sublime. OK, the second of the four grade ones is the 150. It's the Chanel Farmer novice hurdle over two miles. And Frank, take it away with the show. Yeah, we've joined favourites in Classical Dream and Vision Donair, both at 5-2. Aramon's 130 and two cats, 8-1. Triplicate and Valdu are 12-1 and we're 16-1 bar. And David, who is going to cross the line in front? Uh, Vision on air. Um, I can't tell you how much they love this horse in Gordon's. Like they absolutely adore him. Um, they were devastated when he was beaten first time out um, at Leprechaun, and obviously he's got form to turn around here. But he was so much more professional last time at Punchestown. He looked a proper racehorse, more professional that day. Jump great, travel great, put the race to bed. Beat a, a well touted horse of William Mullins that was well backed, owned by J.P. McManus. Like, if you were to believe even half the things you hear about Vision Don Air, he must be a superstar. And I think this will be his first grade one success. Frank? Yeah, look, he, he was very impressive the last day, but um, he's, like, if you remember, Classical Dream beat him at Christmas, albeit he probably needed the run. Um, and that's where they're, they're closely matched the betting. I'm going to take a flyer in one of the price here because um, I've been probably tipping up too many favourites. But um, Valju, for Noel Meads, one that I thought... Albeit it was a bad race the last eight days, probably. He won very easily. Um, 
he had plenty of runs and bumpers. I think he had seven runs and bumpers in total. Uh, probably one of the highlights was that he was second to Malone Road and Down Royal, and obviously we know that horse is a, looks an absolute tool. He seemed to get his act together when he won a Down Royal at Christmas um, in his final bumper, and obviously was impressive over hurdles. He's an each way price. He's about twelve to one, um, and in an open looking race where. Yeah, I'm not too gone on the likes of Aramon or some of the other outsiders. I think he might be able to hit the frame. Uh, albeit if Vision Denier is as good as they think he is, he'll probably be tough to beat. But uh, I try Val do at the prices. Val, dear. Yeah. OK, thank you, chaps. Let's move on to the flow gas. Novice chase, two mile, five furlongs, grade one at three o'clock. And Delta Work, who Frank likes very much, heads the market. Yeah, he's seven to four. Labagger Wa is fifteen to eight. Winter Escape four to one. Hardline and Mortal are both ten to one, and we're twenty-five to one bar. And there are eight runners, so we can have a cut at one at a decent price each way, or we can focus on the Fabs. What are you going to do, Frank? I, I like think that this is a very good race. I think it'll be a good pointer to the RSA as well, because obviously Labagger Wa ties in so closely with Top of the Game and Santini. Uh, but I love Delta Work. I think he's so. I think he's really tough and honest. It's hard to believe he's still only six. He won the pretense to five year old off a mark of 139. He was touched off in uh, the grey one of Punchtown by Next Destination, beating a neck. And again, he's another horse that's just improved with every chase start. Um, only generated an RPR of 128 up and down Royal the first day over two miles, three and a half. It would have been short enough from one, the Drinmore beating the Richburg, who's won a great one since. And uh, one very nice to Leopard's Town. Staying is his game. And I hope uh, he wins. Two mile five is probably a small bit against him. I think three miles is optimum. But I think Labagua might be able to set it up for him. And if he's anywhere near or jumping the nats, I think he'll uh, outstay her. And I personally think he should be favoured for the RSA. David Jennings, do you agree? It's funny, of all the races in Sandown or Leperton either day, this is the race I'm most looking forward to. I think this is an absolute belter. Um, if you were to pick a track, a trip, ground, you would pick th- those three terms that uh, she's going to get on Sunday for Labago Raw. Um, everything is in her favour. But, and she's obviously got form tied in, she's beaten top of the game, she's beaten Santini, she's beaten Lost in Translation twice. You know, she, her form really does stack up, but I'm in the Frank camp here with Delta Work. I think he'll win the RSA. The thing about Delta Work is he only usually does what he has to. Like, even when he beat Larichberg in the Drinmore, like, he made a mistake at the last. Davy Russell, you know, was all over the place in the finish and still got him up to, to win a shade snugly in the end. Um, he won the Pretemps final last year, beating Glenn Lowe, two really well handicapped horses. I think he should cope with the two mile five. He's a really slick jumper. Now he got very low a couple of times at Leperstown over Christmas, but he still won convincingly, even though the horse that was chasing him made a mistake at the last. But like Frank said, I think he'll win the RSA. I think he should be favoured for the RSA, and I think he's going to be very hard to beat. Two very confident shouts for Delta Work, not just for Sunday, but also for Cheltenham in the RSA. And the other race we're going to sh- uh, shine our light on is the three thirty five. Arguably the highlight of the whole weekend, the Unibet Irish Gold Cup over three miles. It's wide open, it's high class, it's a cracker. How do Paddy Power bet, Frank? Yeah, we're five to two roll to respect, 130 both album photo and Bells Hill, six to one Mona Lee, 15 to two Annabelle Fly, 16 to one Balka de Flo, Outlander and the Storyteller and 25's Bar. And David Jennings, who will cross the line in front? Um, my strongest fancy the whole weekend is Bells Hill, Bruce. Um, the worry is going left-handed and Leperstown, who he doesn't have a good record going left-handed or at Leperstown. But I l- watched back the Savills chase and it didn't seem to be a problem. He just blew up in the closing stages. He he was last off the bridle. And coming down to the last, you really thought he was going to put it up to Kenboy. But he just, it was his first run for a long, long time. He hadn't ran since April. He comes alive in the second half of the season. And to be honest, I think he's potentially the second best horse in the Gold Cup market. Um, I think he could be second favourite for the Gold Cup after this race. Um, if you go back to the Irish National last year, like to do what he did with that weight on that ground, I thought that was an incredible performance. He backed it up by winning the Grade 1, beaten Road to Respect at Punchestown. I think he could be the, the horse that takes the second half of the, the season by storm in the Stay and Chase division. And I'd be bitterly disappointed if Bells Hill doesn't win. OK, and who's your fancy, Frank? Yeah, I can see Bells Hill was a. I thought he was an eye catcher at Christmas, all right, but uh, yeah, the, the track and stuff might just be a small question mark for me. The one I'm going to go with, he's kind of a horse I I love, but he's never really done me too much of a favour financially, is uh, Album Photo. Um, look, he, he's been 
unlucky a little bit throughout his chasing yeah. career. Like if you think back to Limerick in that grade two at Christmas last year, um, he was all set to win when he fell at the last, leaving Dunacost to win. He was second at Leopardstown in the Flow Gas, beating three quarters length by Mona Lee. Um, fell in the RSA when he was going to be probably third, potentially second, behind presenting Percy. Um, obviously won the Ryanair chase at Fairy House, beating Shattered Love, who'd won the JLT. And obviously the infamous race where uh, Paul Towner made a bit of a boo-boo at the last at Pontchastown, where he was all set to win over three miles and he ran out. Now, it was a reappearance at Tremor, which really caught the eye. He was give, like, look, I don't know what the fitness was like. Like, was he fully fit and total recall limitation only weren't? But, like, he gave them £10 and fairly well hammered them. Now, total recall was slightly unfortunate at Tarlis behind two way per me. He was just behind them when he whacked the last and nearly came down. He would have been very close to winning that. And, obviously, invitation only won the Tiestes and pressed free enough last week off a mark of 152. There's plenty of substance to that form. And it's hard to believe this horse is only seven. He He's definitely open to plenty of improvement considering he's so young. And I know Ruby's picked Bells Hill, but I like Alban Photo a lot and uh, I think he might be able to win on Sunday. OK, four other cracking races on the car. David, do you fancy anything else? Uh, yeah, in the 4.10. Um, now, this is a horse that will probably um, cause Frank to start hysterical laughter, but I'm going to give Land of Hope and Glory another chance. He's down to 130. He was such an eye-catcher in a Tim Duggan at Limerick over Christmas. He made two desperate mistakes. He was hampered at the second last, and he was still banged there on the bridle in between the final two fences. I thought, we, I thought this is a horse that's coming back to himself and ready to win again. And It's interesting that Luke Dempsey that rode him at Limerick is back on board. He's only carrying 10-1 in that 4.10, two mile five around Leprosen should be perfect. Look, he's been bitterly disappointing, but um, he's a horse that I think can win over fence off at 130. Land of Hope and Glory in the 4.10. Is uh, Frank, do you agree with David that Land and Hope of Glory win, or do you agree with David that you will ridicule that tip? Oh, no, I wouldn't ridicule it. He was definitely an eye catcher at Limerick. Like, he wasn't beaten that far, and... Uh, you know, those JP horses can come alive and those big handicaps you only have to look at over and at Christmas. Like, you wouldn't have really given him much of a hope and he absolutely bolted in. So, yeah, Land of Hope and Glory has the back class. So it's who, not do you, a, who else do you like on the card? Um, well, I've had two anti-post bets um, for Leopardstown and the first one's the Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. And there's a couple in there. It's held up pretty well. Like, obviously, Cut the Mustard potentially could be fairly treated still off 128. She was second in a two-mile handicap hurdle at Leopardstown behind Jetez. Sonoria was impressed with Down Royal in a maiden hurdle. She's off 128. And they probably have a good line, Henry Brahma, with Honeysuckle, who's, um, to me, is the star mayor. Uh, novice mayor of the season so they might be out of a good line with her and she's off 128 could be fair enough Court Maid is another one for Thomas Mullins off 124 it's probably in the fair mark but the one I really like and I've had a I've had a decent bet on it is Sassy Diva for Shane Crawley now She's an eight-year-old mare. She's not the most resolute in the battle, potentially, but like some of her form is very good. Like If you go back far enough, she was second in the list of bumper at Fairy House to Fiona, albeit beaten 20 lengths. But there were plenty of um, 120 mares behind her that day, like Miss Sapphire, Classical Theatre, the likes of those. She was 15 lengths clear of the third that day, which kind of went to highlight that she had a bit of ability. Um, she went to Aintree that t in the mare's bumper, disappointed. Uh, had a couple of goals over hurdles, travelled really well, didn't find much. Reappeared in November this year, went to air. She absolutely hacked up beating a horse called Peter's Cousin um, for Nicky Richards. Now, Peter's Cousin went to Kelso subsequently and beat off the hook who's rated 121. Um, actually, that Peter's Cousin's one you could throw in the notebook. She's well handicapped off 111. Um, but Sassy Diva then went to Turles, was beaten ahead by Ting Tangle. She was all over the winner, got nailed on the line. She was giving £5 to Ting Tangle. Ting Tangle was third behind the Honeysuckle last week. Is rated 130. Then she went to listed hurdle at Turles, was second to Honeysuckle, giving her three pounds. Honeysuckle is one I've backed for the mayor's novice hurdle. I think she's really good. So it was a fair effort to only beat in three and a quarter lengths. And Sassy Diva gets in here off a mark of 116. She's definitely well handicapped. She'll come to the last hurdle, I think, travelling. Whether she'll get out battled or not, I don't know. But I think she's really well treated. Um, I think there's a massive chance. And the other one I backed is in the 225, the William Fry handicap hurdle over three miles. Pleasure done for uh, Willie Mullins, Ruby Walsh rides. Um, Dallas, the pick down's a massive danger, running off 130. He probably needs to win to get into the Martin Pipe, um, which I think probably is his aim. But Pleasure Dome was obviously really well thought of on the flat. Went off a uh, 5 to 1 favour for the Irish Cesar, which off a mark of 85. Um, was 8 in that, beaten 8 lengths. Went, was 4th in November handicap at Nace off 84. So it's pretty decent um, flat form. Um, 
She was well fancy for grade three at Cork over hurdles, was beaten that day, disappointed badly, but the ground was terrible. Went to Limerick at Christmas in a grade two. Uh, she travelled really well, just couldn't get a run at all, and it was very difficult then to pick up late on that ground. Um, I think she's definitely well handicapped off 130. I think she's got a solid chance as well. Beautiful. Thank you, chaps. DJ, I presume you are hard at it both days from Leopardstown, are you? Jeez, you can't say that on air, Bruce. What? Oh, it's, oh, you mean working? Sorry, yeah, yeah, no, I'll be You're working. You're married now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of it. Don't worry about the other stuff. Oh, uh, yes, working, I meant. Yeah, I will be Looking forward to it? Both days, yeah, I can't wait. That's what it's all about. Should be good. Frank, are you going to be able to get along or are you going to be locked into the uh, studio at Paddy Power, uh, Power Towers doing your thing? Being the good egg that I am, Bruce, I said I'd work week, the weekend to let the lads go um, go up to Leperstown. So I'm the one taking the bullet. But um, we, it's actually... Myself and Jill's two-year wedding anniversary this weekend, so oh, we're going lovely. to a nice hotel. Yeah, a nice. Imagine it's two years already. Well, time nice. flies when you're. Time flies, doesn't it? But um, yeah, we're going out to a nice hotel Sunday night, so I'll try and get out of work early Sunday, hopefully. What's the hotel Pardon? called? What's uh, the hotel the Westbury. called? The Westbury. Oh, so if my, so if my, so he must my have tips are. A few winners lately. Mm. Absolutely not, and a shocking run. But sure, if my tips are shite, you can come to the Westbury and give me grief on Sunday evening if you want. I, I stayed at the Westbury once, and it's a beautiful breakfast. It's really nice. But there was this thing called box tea on there, B-O-X-T-Y. So I said to the waiter, I said, what's this box tea? He goes, it's a potato thing. I said, what? He goes, it's a potato thing. I said, what? And the lady goes, he, he means it's a potato thing. That's a translation. So I've never had box tea ever since, but that's what I always remember it for. So if you stand over, do have the box tea for breakfast the next day, Frank. OK, congratulations on two years. Thank you very much indeed for your input, chaps. Maddie is back on Money to review a fantastic weekend and take an early look ahead to the following weekend's action. And then she's also back in this chair next Friday, looking ahead to Betfair Hurdle Day at Newbury. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is The Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.